So last week, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti announced an extension to the stay-at-home order for three additional months, and folks like Ben Shapiro are not very happy about it. Let's break down his response. So this sort of idiocy leads to the kind of policies that we have seen in the state of California, my home state. So the state of California has not suffered from a massive outbreak. The state of California has, last I checked, something like seven deaths per 100,000 citizens in the state of California. Grand total in in the state of California, California COVID-19 deaths, last I checked, were under 3,000 deaths statewide. We have 40 million citizens in the state of California. We have 2,770 confirmed deaths from COVID-19 in the state of California, according to sort of the the, the numbers that, that Google is popping up for me here right now. Okay, so those are not massive, incredibly large numbers. So I hear this argument all the time and it doesn't make any sense they say oh california is doing a lot better it's not the epicenter so we don't need to have stringent stay-at-home orders we need to reopen but the fact is the reason why california didn't end up in a position like new york is because we shut down earlier and had the stay-at-home orders so they were able to avoid being an epicenter so it doesn't make any sense to say to look at it in a vacuum and say oh because it has fewer well it has fewer cases because of the orders that had been enacted I mean, if you look at the data here, on March 15th, New York had 729 reported cases. California had 392. So New York had about two times as many cases as California. However, California shut down earlier. So they shut down about a week earlier than in New York. And now if you look at it on May 23rd, New York has about 358,000 cases and California had about 88,000 cases. So New York now has about four times as many cases compared to California. So you can't look at the number of cases without correlating it with the policies that were acted during this time period to arrive at the number of cases that happened. Without doing that, you're just saying, oh, California has fewer cases, but you you, you have to examine what California has done to get to these number of cases. So without doing that, without correlating the two things, it's just, I don't know, it's just dumb. It's dumb. It's, it's, not, it's not factual. It's not accurate. It's dumb. Here's the reality. Politicians cannot lock down this way. Americans are just not going to stand for it. And they're particularly not going to lock down in the idiotic fashion that is now being promoted by the Los Angeles state government. So California is saying, well, why don't we let people decide on a county by county basis? Just going to point out when Donald Trump says that, according to the states, when he says states should decide, localism should rule, he's very bad. When Gavin Newsom says counties should decide on a county by county basis, then Gavin Newsom, apparently, according to the media, is very, very good. Okay, so that obviously, based on my point of view, as always, is a very fair assessment of the media. Whenever Trump does something, if you compare it, if it's the exact same policy being said, if Trump does it, it is bad. If somebody else like Gavin Newsom, a Democrat does it, then it's somehow interpreted as as good. So I do agree with this. Media, unfair, 100%. But you still can't say that Trump is doing a good job. You can't make that argument because Trump really hasn't. I don't know how you want to break this down, but Trump has not done a good job effectively dealing with the coronavirus. He's had maybe a few good ideas that pop up here and there from his press conference uh, rant, if you want to call it that. Uh, but he has no clear strategy of how to handle this. One day it's this, another day we got to open, and then he criticizes Georgia government for opening. You just, just, just basically a brain dump, and then let's see what happens. So what the media probably should say, if they're fair and honest actors, is like, hey, this idea by Trump is good. However, it doesn't seem to be fitting into any overall strategy to handling this pandemic and getting us out of this pandemic. So in that sense, not so good. What's the next steps after that, Mr. President? So that's probably what should be asked instead of saying that everything he says is bad. That's what that's that's that. That's that's what I think. The policies that are being promulgated in LA are completely idiotic. So are the policies in California for reopening counties. I'll explain the policies, okay? Here are some of the policies. The the policies according to the LA Times at the beaches. You ready for this? How people can use the sand will look different. Face coverings will be required when not in the water. Sunbathing won't be allowed. Only active recreation, surfing, running, walking, and swimming will be permitted. Coolers, chairs, umbrellas, and any of the other accessories that typically dot the shoreline should be left at home. Do people understand like why masks are useful? Or why being outside is good? Or why social distancing is useful? So the idea is what? I'm going to like take my kids to the beach. I'm going to pop open that back door. I'm going to take my kids, I'm going to walk down with them to the water, throw them in the water, take them out of the water, walk back to the car, shove them inside. Like, what the hell are you talking about? This is not how beaches work. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, Ben's probably right here. That's that's really not how beaches work, clearly. You can't just literally hop into the water, exit the water, and, and have nothing in between and not hanging out. So that's, yes, I get that. But I think I understand the reasoning behind the policy, although I don't necessarily agree with it. So I think the reasoning behind the policy 
is that they know that if they say the beaches are open and there's no regulation, then people are just, it's going to be a free for all. Everybody's going to go there. It's going to be all mixing and, and there's not going to be actual social distancing. So I think what they're trying to do is like deter people that are, that are more brazen by from doing that. It's like a slippery slope type of situation. They know people are going to not going to follow it. So they come up with stricter orders than they should. And then those orders aren't followed. Then people are confused, like good people that really want to follow the policies. They're like, wow, we can't do any of that stuff. And they don't. But then people who don't give a crap, they're just like, ah, we're going to do whatever we want. And then so now you have people all confused, which is ultimately a bad situation. It's just kind of like uh, if you have a friend that gets to places late all the time. And so you tell them, oh, we're going to meet at six. Uh, when in fact, everybody's meeting at seven. And so if they find out about this, then they're going to be like, what the fuck, man? It's super disrespectful. So... While I, you know, I understand the rationale for making these type of really strict policies, I don't really agree with it. I think just tell people what's appropriate. It's like, hey, go to the beach. You can hang out on the sand, but just try not to mingle with the other crowds. Like, go with your family, stay within your own group, social distance, go in the water if you want to. I don't think that's a big danger. Don't be playing any, you know, tackle football with strangers. And so I think if you give people reasonable policies, they'll follow reasonable policies. If you give them crazy policies, they're going to be like, no, we're not doing this. We're just going to do whatever the hell we want. So I don't, I, I understand, like I said, the rationale of this policy, but I do not agree with it. The stay at home orders are going to remain in place for three months until the end of July, which is patently insane. It means the end of the economy of Los Angeles, as everybody well understands. Like this is madness, but that's not the, the that's not even the extent of the stupidity. So according to Gavin Newsom's standards, there are two criteria as to which counties can move into reopening phases, whether deaths have stopped completely in the last 14 days from COVID-19, and whether there is no more than one case per 10,000 residents in that same time period. Most Americans want us to get it right. You look at polls across the country, certainly here in Los Angeles, it's go slow, don't go fast and get it right so we don't have to retreat. So she wanted to make sure that I communicated and what she was communicating is that we still need to have a public health order because there are some populations who will need to stay at home. People need to know whenever possible it is safer to stay at home. So if you can telecommute, et cetera, and there's no radical changes in the next week coming. Okay, so again, when he says that people want to go slow, nobody is defining these terms. Go slow. Nobody is defining what exactly that looks like. So this is the part where I think the media doesn't do a good job here and Ben is not making a good point because they do define what go slow means. The government has said going slow. It's 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 no deaths. It's basically no deaths for 14 days. That's what they mean by go slow. You just don't like that. When people criticize the media or criticize the government for these bad policies, they don't really come up and present good ideas to say how we should deal with it. So for me, you know, if I were to offer my thoughts here and say, hey, the R naught is probably the most important thing we should worry about. We should probably worry about the transmission of this disease and we want this transmission to be lower. And how do we do that? in a different way rather other than a strict lockdown. Okay, so it seems like masks proven by studies as well as proven in real life are the most effective ways to do that. There's a study that's conducted by a team of scientists in Hong Kong that found the rate of contact transmission through respiratory droplets or airborne particles dropped by as much as 75% when masks were used. They also state that universal masking at 80% adoption flattens the curve significantly more than maintaining a strict lockdown. Now, to me, that sounds like a good thing. So none of us really want a continuous strict lockdown. It doesn't seem like that's what the American people want. So the other alternative here that you should present is masks. There's, an, there's another graph that I want to pull up here that talks about um, how the r naught is affected by both the adherence, so how often somebody's wearing a mask, versus the efficacy of the mask. Obviously, the N95 mask, the medical grade mask, is the most effective of all masks. And the cloth masks that people have been wearing are not, not as effective. Some say about 50% effective, more or less, 50 or 60% effective. However, if you look at this, if we have, if the mask itself, if you look at the efficacy, 60, if that's 60% efficacy, that meaning, meaning the mask is only 60% effective in preventing the spread of the disease, but you have over 75, 80% of the people wearing that mask then that means the R0 is effectively dropped below one. So if we can achieve that, then eventually the disease will die out. So I think the media needs to do a better job in terms of explaining why the masks are important because they've lied to us about masks throughout this whole process. And first saying masks are not effective in preventing anything, you need to just don't need to wear it. And it's they, they said that because um, they didn't have enough masks for the uh, to the healthcare workers, which is you know, so they were trying to get people from not hoarding masks, which I get. Once again, I get that rationale where you're saying, hey, 
we need this for the people. We, we need these for the healthcare workers, so we don't want people to buy them. So let's tell people that they're not effective. I get that, but I think a better way to do this once again is to empower people with information. Say, hey, masks are definitely effective, or else doctors wouldn't be wearing them. So you need to have masks. But right now, we have a situation where we're super, super low on these medical personal protective equipment like these N95 masks. So please do not go and buy them. We need them for the healthcare workers. If you have them, please donate them. And I think that would be a lot better than just lying to the American people. So now that you've already tainted this idea of masks, so we need to have a re-education on masks saying, hey, this is the most effective way to do it. If, even if it's 60% effective and 80% of people wearing them, we can get that r not number to be below one and we can get ourselves out of this coronavirus pandemic. And there's real life data to show this. If you look at the other countries' trajectories of COVID, the countries without masks or that don't have high adoption of masks fare much worse than countries that use masks on a more frequent basis. I mean, this is cultural, but Asian countries tend to have a higher adoption of masks in general, even before COVID. So if you look at countries like South Korea, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, there are already a lot of people wearing masks prior to this outbreak. It's just a cultural thing to do. Um, so as you can see here, their cases more or less have been flat and they've been able to keep their economies open uh, with social distancing um, you know, measures, of course, but they were able to keep more things open and running normally compared to countries like ours, where we had a huge shutdown and millions of people out of work. Um, so I think mask, I think, is a very reasonable ask. Even Hannity on Fox talked about how he would be 100% willing to wear masks to a sporting event to get that going again. So I think we can get people on board with his mask idea. So let's enact a mask policy where people could still go outside, they can go to restaurants, they can do these type of things and open it slowly. So let's say you still have, similar to a California, you have a phase opening approach. So let's say, okay, so we're gonna open retail for 30 days and we're gonna measure the R not for these 30 days. If they still stays below one, let's go to the next thing. Let's open up restaurants. You know, and so on and so forth until you get to a point where things are gradually open. So I think the government needs to pick an appropriate metric to measure against as we reopen the country. And the one they have right now with deaths is probably not the best way to do it. It's, it's the transmission of the disease is one of those key metrics that they really need to look at. And I scoured through all the documents in the California webpage on the reopening plan, the phased approach and what the different guidelines are. I didn't see a, a major emphasis or any emphasis on this R not idea. And I think this is one of the key things. If we can do that, then the coronavirus will eventually die out. I still firmly believe that if you give people the right information and give them the proper respect, they are going to rise to the challenge. That's what I think. If it's about wearing masks, if that's, if that's the goal here in the next stage, is we have to talk about the mask. Let's talk about how important it is. And let's talk about this R not number, decreasing that to below one so we can get things back to normal, bring them along in this journey in this conversation with you. And I believe if you ask reasonable things, you will receive reasonable responses. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to 5149 with James Lee. I'd love to hear your thoughts on masks, whether you think it's a good idea, bad idea. Would you be willing to wear a mask to go shopping, to go to the grocery store, to go to restaurants, if in fact means that we can slowly but surely get ourselves out of this lockdown at home type situation. I think that is a potentially a fair way to go and a reasonable way to go. Um, and it seems to be fairly effective in countries that uh, have adopted that policy. As always, I appreciate your support in helping us take back our media. Please like, please subscribe, please share, and I'll see you next time.